Hi there, welcome to the sixth video in this uh, tutorial uh, demonstrating the All Saints Atlanta virtual choir production process. Um, we have just completed our Melodyne editing of pitch and rhythm uh, in the Melodyne plugin within Logic Pro, uh, and we are now going to talk about panning and bus presets. Um, so I'm going to close out of the Melodyne window, just hitting the X up on the top left. Uh, and now I'm going to uh, just apply some blanket panning. Panning is uh, how far or how much a audio file is playing out of either the left or the right speaker. Um, by default, everything is set to center, so it will be playing equally uh, out of both left and right speakers. And by the way, if you're listening to something and like the audio on this singer's track is not level between these two green lines, See how there's two green lines? That means it's in stereo. Um, if it's not level, that means they panned themselves on Soundtrap on accident. So if it's only coming out of one, or if it's coming more out of one than the other, then they're they're panned, and you can offset that using this pan tool right here. I'll show you exactly how that works in a moment. But um, if that if you run into that issue, that's how you solve that. Um, okay, so um, here's what I do, and I do the exact same thing for every project. I don't sit there messing around with you know, tweaking things to make it just right or whatever. It's, I do exactly the same thing to everybody. Um, select the first soprano, shift, select the last soprano. And now I do two things at once. I'm gonna set the bus sends and I'm gonna pan them uh, at, while I have them selected. It just saves time. Uh, normally, obviously I'm not explaining this as I go, so it's very quick. Double click on the pan knob, set all the sopranos to minus five. And then I go up here to sends. Always do sopranos first because whatever order you set the bus sends in is whatever order they will appear over here. So I go sends, bus, bus one. And then now aux one appears over here and you'll see all sopranos are going to bus one. So this is my bus one, it's labeled right here. Uh, we'll talk about what that means in a second. Um, next, sorry, I just got an email. Um, next, hold shift for the first alto, click on the last alto, double click on the panning knob, minus 15 for the altos. Go up to bus, so go up to sends rather, bus 2 for altos, and then bus 2 appears here. Now if I did this in the opposite order, even if I set it to go to bus 2, bus 2 would be here and bus 1 would be here. So that's why you have to start with sopranos, otherwise I get all turned around if I do that. So first tenor, shift, last tenor, double click, I set them to 15. So this is minus five to the left. Negative is to the left, positive is to the right. 15 to the left, 15 to the right. I'm not hard panning anybody all the way to the left or all the way to the right. I'm not really doing that much drastically in either direction. This can go all the way to 64. Um, I, don't, I don't see the need to do that and we're gonna do something in a minute uh, that will make it sound more expansive anyway. Uh, actually, in the next video, we'll do that. But uh, Oh, forgot to do my bus sends. Select the tenors again. Send, bus, three. Bases. I set them to ten. Now, the reason I don't set them to five is I don't want this to feel symmetrical when you're listening to it. I want it to have a little bit of... Um, I want it to be a little off-center, actually. Um, and I just kind of found these values to work well in experimenting with this stuff. So um, bus four is where I send them to. Now, if you're working with a backing track that was recorded in a very dry space, uh, you'll wanna send your backing track to a bus and apply another preset to that so that it matches the um, space that we're putting the singers in. Now in the case of All Saints Atlanta, the space is, uh, it has a nice reverb already. If I send it to a bus and apply this preset to it, it's gonna be a little bit too wet. So um, I usually just leave the backing track as it is. Uh, and the only things I ever do to it are if I notice some hiss at the beginning or the end, um, I'll apply some RX-8 spectral denoise. Even at the end of this processing chain, it's still fine. We didn't do any Melodyne editing, so it's not gonna distort anything. Um, if you do some Melodyne editing, even then it's probably not gonna mess it up, but if you do a lot, maybe. Uh, now, I've got my panning all set. 
I'm going to select the any either end of them, either the first or the last, hold shift, select the opposite end just for the singers, and now double click on this knob. Uh, we sent them to these buses, but they're not actually running through, they're not applying to it at all, because this knob right here sets the degree to which they're running through the bus. Now if I send it at plus six, that's going to be too much. Um, so if you double click, you can enter a value, I put zero, it sends it at zero, right? Why did it go to 0.1 for some of these and not the others? It's not going to let me undo that. Okay, well, let me just drag them all down, minus infinity. By the way, oh, so when I double clicked, it dragged it up a little bit. That's super annoying. There we go. So sometimes if that ever happens to you, you can go one by one, set them all to zero, um, or just do what I did and select a few of them at a time to get them all to zero. You want them at the same degree, otherwise it's gonna apply different amounts of reverb. So if you're not sure, click it once and it'll pop up with the amount that it's going. Let me just scan through, make sure I didn't mess anything up. There we go, all good to go. Now, we sent it to the buses, but the buses aren't actually doing anything yet. That's where those presets come in. Um, in another video that is linked in the Google Doc, uh, within that folder that I have on my website uh, for the bus presets, it shows you how to get these installed so that they'll pop up this way. Uh, but I'm gonna click on the first bus for the Sopranos, bus one, up on setting. I'm gonna go down to user channel strip settings. Now I have a couple different options here. I have an ASW A bus, or all these ASW buses, um, and uh, some Palmer buses. For All Saints uh, Atlanta, I use the Palmer ones. The Palmer ones uh, are actually for my home church uh, here in Houston, and it's designed to mimic that space there. It works really well for the All Saints Atlanta, and it sounds kind of consistent with the backing tracks too. So I just use that. Um, now, some other um, places that I've edited for uh, have a less reverberant space uh, in their home facility. So I designed another one that is a little bit less. So that's why there's different um, names there. The um, components of it are exactly the same except for the reverb. So I'm applying now Palmer S bus, Palmer Soprano bus, to this first bus for the Sopranos. Now I'm gonna apply Palmer A bus to the altos. Palmer T bus to the tenors, Palmer B bus to the basses, and if you had that fifth bus for the send, to that you would want to apply Palmer bus no low pass, and that's gonna take off this um, drop off on the low end uh, so that it's not chopping off the lower frequencies. For the voices, nobody is phonating below about, I mean, nobody really gets down here anyway, but, um, Nobody's phonating down in this area, so I don't need any of that audio, so I just roll it off. Um, the components of this bus are three different uh, EQ presets uh, and then a reverb. Uh, and if you want to toy with these, you can, but uh, I designed these. Um, this is a subtractive reverb, and basically what I did is I did an EQ sweep. If you're curious about what that is, go to YouTube it. Um, uh, I think his... The YouTube user is named Devin, shows you things, or something like that. Um, but if you type in EQ uh, Logic Pro, he'll, he'll show you how this works. You just sweep across with one of these um, at max until you hear some, uh, something uh, stick out of the texture significantly, and then you pull it down a little bit. So these were designed um, specifically for uh, pulling out funkiness in uh, low quality audio like from cell phone recordings. So I have two different subtractive reverbs. Um, so I'm, so I'm, you see here Palmer subtractive EQ1 for Sopranos and then I actually think I used the alto one for this one. Or maybe it's not saved. Not sure. Um, but I designed another subtractive EQ for the higher frequencies and then I have an additive EQ where I'm just boosting the range that they sing in. Uh, the reverb is here. I just used the built-in chromoverb because it comes with logic, uh, and you can, um, in this details tab, you can also change the EQ of the reverb itself. Um, you don't necessarily need to know how to do this. 
Uh, the only thing that might be of interest to you uh, in particular is this decay knob. If you turn it up, it's going to get more wet. If you turn it down, it's going to get dry. Um, so that that is usually all that I change uh, from uh, in, in working with different uh, groups. If their space is less reverberant, I drag it down. If it's more reverberant, I drag it up. But usually it's not more reverberant than this. So let's hear what this sounds like now. And all I did, again, is send it to these buses and apply these presets. And this is what the result is. Now, I actually think the organ might be overpowering a little bit. Um, and let me click out. So I'm looking over here at the inspector sometimes at the stereo out as well. Um, you can see it in the on this end of the mixer, but if I'm over here, I can't really see it as well. So that's why I have this inspector open. Um, you notice it says minus two is the peak level. This number right here refers to where um, the maximum volume is falling right now. Minus two is a little bit on the high side. That's why it's yellow. So, See now, 0.0, .0 that means it peak, it's peaking. Um, so that's not good. We want to pull this down a little bit. I'm actually going to pull the backing track down first because it sounds a little too much right now. Let me back up. So you can already hear the consonants are being masked a little bit, and this reverb is designed to kind of meld them together so that anything that's not lined up just gets covered up by um, the reverb. So it saves you time in the editing process because you don't have to be as detailed uh, in Melodyne making sure that everything is exactly correct, uh, although you could. Um, now it's still a little bit too loud. I like the balance though. Uh, and remember earlier, these are all set to zero. They're all equal, but they weren't earlier before we uh, bounced and replaced all tracks in the RX-8 stage. These were all at different levels. So um, they've already been sort of balanced. I might do a little bit more in here um, to get a better mix, but uh, we'll see. Let me. I'm going to select everything, including the backing track, though, and I'm going to pull it all down a little bit. No, see? Stereo out went up to the red. Let's go down more. Backing up. I might even pull this down a little bit more. better. Now we're falling in a good range over here. Uh, let me just... Not bad. Okay, I think we're, think we're pretty good there. I only had to do a little adjustment over there. So, once you've got all this done, uh, you are ready to move on to the mastering stage, which will be in the next video, which should be significantly shorter. Um, but thank you for watching up to this point, uh, and we'll see you in the next one.